I want to start this off, guys. I want you to hit the drum for every kid that Nick Cannon has. You ready? Yeah. On the count of three. One, two, three, go! Oh. <laughs> I have a question for you. Yes, to start off. <laughs> you go to an all black uh, s school. You were the only white guy. Did there. I? Yeah. No, I went to an all Jewish school. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Where I was one of many Jews. Okay. And but one of the poorer Jews there, you know. <laughs> did you play the drums? No. Or any band? Uh, I played bass for about a year. Uh, and then I became, <laughs> and then I became the eighth grade treasurer. And there wasn't enough time to do both. Mm, okay. I could either count money or play bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I learned how to play hella good by no doubt. And I was like, that's good for me. Okay, so these were my only two guesses of why you would like this movie. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now well, look, you tell me, how is this your favorite movie or one of your favorite movies? So there was a... Uh, uh, <sighs> I mean, you know, when you were growing up, there was, you know, you had TV and then we're just... If you were doing stuff and you found out that there was uh, one of your favorite movies was on TV, you're like, oh, I'm going to stop doing whatever I'm doing and just keep on going and, you know, finish this movie. Yeah. And there were a lot of movies that I had to watch in order to find that one. And so Nick Cannon had a whole bunch of shit going through, like, in a short amount of time. There was Love Don't Cost a Thing. Uh, there was Drumline. I'm trying, I want to say there was at least one or two other ones. Yeah. Um... I've never I I, I I check him out after this in terms of like I, I had not seen any of his movies or any of the di the director's movies. I was like racist. I, have, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are these things in common? The, yeah. <laughs> no, I have never heard of this movie before. You've never even heard of it? No. I, oh wow, dude! It's I in the it's seven, in the Criterion yeah. collection. I yeah, <laughs> I, I saw it. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> How? No, but uh, I I watched it yesterday for the first time. Pretty I had never good, seen huh? it before, and it's like first time. Yeah. What? So yeah. Right. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? First time for me too. It's a classic, dude. Yeah. It's <laughs> because no, because like I mean I've seen this type of movie many times. What do you mean by this type? The <laughs> high school, like Friday next Friday. Yeah, high, high oh, school. Okay, exactly what I thought. Okay, <laughs> a high school Hot high water. school movie with like you know the competitions and the there's like even the cheerleading or the you know there's sort of I like bring it on. Yeah. yeah. Bring It On was good. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's a whole bunch of other movies from that time too. Bring It On was a lot more in that lane. Yeah. But there was like, I like the Adam Sandler movies. Now, look, I liked Happy Gilmore, but there was also that movie uh, Bulletproof with Damon Wayans. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I think Dennis Hopper was in that too. I don't uh, remember. There was Money Talks. Um, with Martin Lawrence, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Chris Tucker. Oh, Chris Tucker. Tucker. Chris Tucker, Tucker and uh, Chris Sheen, Tucker. Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Uh, uh. That was fucking great. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I remember, I, you know what hooked me in to Drumline? It was the music. I'd watch it, it came on, and then like, there would be, it's it was all like drum, like rhythms and stuff that are all easily to replicate. I remember my brother, um, I think he thought he was going to be getting into drums, mm -hmm. and so he just had... My parents were smarter and like weren't going to give him like a full drum set to just start playing in the house, <laughs> but they gave him one of those like drum like practice yeah, yeah, like the rubber thing and like drumsticks. I was oh like, God. <laughs> and then I started watching drum. I'm like, holy shit, I could fucking drum. I could drum line right now. <laughs> and then I would just fucking practice drum line stuff to uh, uh, on the drum pad, and I became really good at just the rhythms specifically in drum line. Like I can't do like all this shit and stuff, but like yeah. I, I could want to. <laughs> interesting about this movie is that the these like uh the black the historically black colleges have only in the past like six or so years become even more mainstream. So I'm from Houston and there's so many of those around there. So I grew up around them, but they would never get good athletes for their teams, et cetera. They would go to places like Duke or Texas. And now you had the number one football recruit in America two years ago go to uh, historically back black college and HBCU, and he transfers to Colorado after that. But you can see the culture completely shift in the mid 2010s, where like drumline wouldn't even be 
it's like a black movie back then. But yeah. Today it would. It's still a black movie today. Yeah, but like if it was made today, <laughs> it would have like a million Mexicans in it. There'd be like right. a funny white guy. There'd be. There like, was just that one Mexican on the big uh, uh, bass drum. I think you he can't was even yeah. really tell if he's Mexican. Or the right. You just know he's not black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I, I put him in the the white category, like yeah. the. the Affirmative action, they call oh, yeah, it, they, right? I like, I like, I like <laughs> there's so many good lines. Beavis and Blackhead. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I got a, uh, I remember someone, I think it was someone at work, uh, gave me a cameo from the, from the only white slash Latino guy from Drumline. <laughs> and it was cool as fuck. I think his name was GQ or yeah, something like exactly. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, well, when I was in New York, uh, when I went, you know, mid like 2000 like, like 2006 <laughs> to 2010 there was certain areas where they would only play black movies for a black audience yeah so they had the magic johnson theater in harlem and, and things like that and that was a very a something to do you know you go to a black theater yeah. to have an experience that is a little slightly different from like a mainstream uh all right, I'll bite. How is it different? The, so, movie, the movie doesn't start on time. You can't hear the drums. No, 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 no. The, the main difference was that I think... I'm so glad I'm not the one saying this stuff. People interacted... Uh, people interacted with the, with the screen in a different way. Oh, I would say. Like, the, the amount of... Uh, they shot the, the involvement. No, they did a shit. But hey, they would talk careful, back. Careful, careful, please. They would talk back. And it was... But I thought it was like... it's. Very interesting, you know, like the Tyler Perry movies would play there, that sort of thing. That changed completely mm -hmm. after the Get Out and Jordan Peele. Yeah. Start playing Marvel think, movies. Like, now it's like, yeah, exactly. Just Black Panther on repeat. No, I think <laughs> the black movies became mainstream. Now, before that, it's like if you have a black uh, protagonist, it'll be a, a black, unless it's a Will Smith thing in a, in a exactly. mainstream Hollywood. It'll be, oh, this is a family, a black family is not a universal family. It is just for this. Now that that is completely gone. I like no. those growing up. Like I liked Barbershop and stuff and even like Blue Streak. It, oh, this Blue sounds, Streak was great. That's one of my favorites. But it sounds crazy, but I always had this feeling. My dad's from Mexico City. Yeah. So when I would see black dads on TV, because they barely had Mexican dads on TV, that we weren't right. there yet. <laughs> yeah. And I always thought, oh, that's like my dad. Like they talk about like funny stuff and pop culture and stuff like that. They're not like like yelling at their kids. Yeah. It just like seemed different. Yeah. For me, coming from a different country, it was like strange to see that, you know, this is, you know, this, this segregation, I guess, in terms I of see. like culture. Oh, yeah, uh, totally. Like that, I, I, I was raised by two Israelis. So like it was always like the... Uh, Hey, are my friends being raised like this? Because I this doesn't feel like, yeah. like my friends would behave the way they were if you know if they had a dad that always threatened violence like the way my <laughs> right. <million> percent. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> like kids talking back in like a 1997 sitcom to oh. their white dad. I'd be like, dude, do you know how hard you would get hit in my Never house? Never did that in <laughs> no. an Israeli household. Jesus Christ, yeah. man. That has ch changed in a way. To, for the worst, I think, like, now kids talk back in every culture. So we should just hit them all, right? A little, a little yeah. spank. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, yeah, it is, you know, tough times make tough people. And when yeah. kids don't get hit, <laughs> it makes wussies. Wait, can we <laughs> talk about the military aspect of this at the beginning? That they basically have full metal jacket with, like, black teenagers instead? Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, there was a definitely, like, a hazing process and shit. Like, it was yeah. always, like... Why is it like this? You know, where it's like um, there was that one dude from a uh, um, uh, smart guy, right? That played Taj Maori's older brother. He's in Drumline. Uh huh. And he was the only one that was in a fraternity. So, like, he would get kidnapped at 3 a.m. Yeah. But then the rest of the Drumline just got woken up at like 3 30 a.m. <laughs> and for some reason, that kidnapping made him like, oh, I can go out with this girl now. Right. It made him a, a man. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's like, he doesn't want to go out with her. I mean, the I don't even know where to start with the movie in terms of like, because I, I get the competition and the mm. the bad kid going, you know, like learning his lessons and he hits all the notes of uh, right of, of that. It's like, I did this journey. without you, dad. Right. That stuff. <laughs> that never really comes back when he goes into like that. Never. <laughs> yeah. It, it was like, uh, what's that movie? Because well, then he had the 12. Because he, he says to him, well, I don't have a bunch of kids running around. I've never been arrested. 
It's like, well, you, you will. Yeah. <laughs> but when that's yeah, scene, give it a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that scene was so crazy. I thought I accidentally put on Fruitvale Station. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Come on, dude. Well, what's crazy is that, like, then later on in the movie. This is always like kind of a blurry thing for me, but it was his dad that then sent them tapes of like old Earth, yeah. Wind, and Fire, right? Yeah. Oh, and in right. my mind, it's like your dad didn't know you existed. Now he knows the address of your dorm. Like, there's mm -hmm. no way. And it says "love dad," and he right. kind of reads it with a little bit of sarcasm, but then he starts listening to the that music, and that music makes him a better person, right? Or like yeah. right. the idea to to rearrange the the final piece you for need the band. That. Look. But then that was the only, that was yeah. his entire arc. Like the first, like it was yeah. two stops on this arc. The first arc is, <laughs> fuck you, I did this without you. Yeah. And then the second arc is like, look, we can't get this guy for another sh like shoot day. Like, <laughs> so let's, you know what? Let's just have him write a letter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where he's just given a whole bunch of tapes and there's no back and forth. It's just, that's it. It's like, I fuck you. You, ne you never knew that I existed. And then he's like, oh, I feel bad. Let me right. figure out where he lives and send him like, 30 tapes <laughs> <laughs> like 30 mixtapes that i made for him <laughs> right also when i saw the mixtapes is like which year are we on because like the movie is from 2000 and what 10 2002 2002 Ooh. sorry 2002 one of the first movies to release after 9 11 oh really i don't know they, <laughs> that's, 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 they, they had to take out the twin towers from every shot the people have seen right remember when they did that for spider-man that was in the exactly. trailer yep. i remember that i mean uh -huh. i know that in the original release for this movie that there's a scene where he plays the drums in a dream on the top of the twin towers <laughs> and they had to cut that <laughs> yeah there's just a web going from the two towers <laughs> and it's a spider-man drumline collab <laughs> it's like um AC well, Joseph Gordon well, it on the string going across. <laughs> You're like, dude, wrong move. Wrong universe. <laughs> Zoe Deschanel and fucking ukulele or something. Like Joe. <laughs> yeah, I, I also was surprised to see Zoe Zaldana in this movie. I, right. I, Great. I Gamora. always like her. Then I had to look look her up again and see when did she start it. This is one of the first her first roles. She was great in it. Yeah. yeah. Also, she there's no uh so for the first hour of the movie, everything goes right for him. Yeah. Like the girl that you think that won't like him, she likes, likes him, him like later. That. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, this guy's no problems. Like, yeah, I guess he's. he's Why does a dad that didn't love him? Right? He's, but like, he's cocky. <laughs> he, yeah, he doesn't follow the rules, but he gets away with so everything. Good, he gets away with. Everything. And in the end, he gets away with breaking like one last rule. And I'm like, what? And yeah. it's crazy because he has such a wild speech pattern where it's like everyone's talking in a normal voice. He's like. Ta, 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 and apply to me, Dr. Lee. <laughs> and it's like, percent. what? Like, who's... <laughs> yeah. But, like, and I don't think he ever... Like, only once, like, later in the movie, he starts talking, like, in a normal register. Oh, like gay guys when they come out of <laughs> anesthesia. Yeah. They sound like truckers. He's, like, opposite closet. Yeah. <laughs> just, like... <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's... <laughs> But it's just such a fun movie. Like, it, and I think what it hooked me into it was just all, like, the music and the rhythms. And it's just so easy to, like... Like, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, like, podcasts that have really good catchy theme songs. Yeah. Like, you, you think about that and you sing it back to yourself. And you're like, nah, let me, let me go back and just listen what to that again. What are your favorites? <sighs> you made it weird. You made right? it weird. There's that. I, I love Tuesdays with Stories. Um, that theme song. There's uh, Theo has a great one. Yeah. You um, two are bad friends. <laughs> I like that one. Bad friends is Jingle. great, too. Yeah, there's, but uh, there's a reality show in this I, movie. Oh. But in, in the movie, you you have like well, the the Jackson Five uh, songs that right. they actually be pl play at the end, right? right. The, there was always such a weird uh, some like popular music in between. There's the there's the uh, classic right way to do music school with right. Orlando Jones, of yes. course. And then there's like the cool school, yeah. That's just like, hey, we're doing like mystical R and B, yeah, R and B and a uh, Pete Pablo. Pete Pablo, yeah. It, it's a little strange because it's like, oh, was that music? Right. That's kind of like <laughs> yeah. The debate is like, I don't like yes. that argument where like something I don't like that it old either. is better. That you know what? And I've talked about this before. I think yeah, Cars does the same thing. I hate the movie Cars because he gets stuck in a small town, and the whole point is that living in a small town makes you a better person because he's on his way to like their the Cars version of L.A. or Vegas or something. Right. And I hate this idea that old things are better. It just like it's dystopian. It's like, but I'm watching a movie living now. Yeah, I I think that the, the the argument of like the classical music, especially, I don't know, did they 
achieve the idea of that being in a band is cool. I don't think the kids in a band were the cool kids. Well, that's how cool, cool black people are. Even their band nerds are cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Because I remember Jesse was in the band, right? Like, that's the nerd stuff. Not yeah, the, I mean, that's why the... she's on Bad Friends. It's like not a place for cool people. Right. Yeah. And, and here it looked like that. The, they are the quarterbacks. You but, know, the cool... but they all fucked. Like, yeah. uh, cool kids fuck. But I'll tell you, <laughs> I, I mean, Andreas, you may not know this, and you probably do. You've been here for, you know, 55 years at this point in <laughs> America. Did. But, like, uh, in the South, those band competitions are a huge deal, and they're very, they're considered cool. Yeah. Like, is this like the cheer documentary, you know, about the how, how that is cool? I was like, okay, that was so nerdy to me. Yeah, I... You, I I could do so much of that. Like, but there's songs in that too. Like that was another staple, uh, bring it on, which, you know, I never really said out loud to anyone until right now. Yeah. Yeah. It was either drumline or bring it on. Because it, they, and they have the same type of vibe. Right. Although bring the sports, on. the sports movies, like the, what's the hockey? Oh, my oh, Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Right? It's the same patterns of, right. of bring it on was great. I saw I, Bring It On in the theaters. I remember. I still yeah. remember it. Oh. Isaac Dushku, so hot. Oh, yeah. Those were responsible for like some of my first boners. I think. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, dude. And then Congrats. this is like a step up or... Oh, my God. Which one? Hold on. Oh, yeah. Uh, With the break dancing. Shani Tatum, right? Sir, you got <laughs> served. Oh, Holy oh, yeah. shit. I totally just forgot about that movie until right now. Do you guys watch You Got Served? I, 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 I have never seen yeah. it. It was kind of like, oh, my God, I kind of need to make an episode of this now. But it's, it was pretty much the story of gentrification of, like, this white dance crew coming in and being like, yeah, we could do this better than every single black right. dance crew. Like, bring it on. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly like <laughs> yeah. bring it on. It's all the same movie, just a different sports it's Lane, right you know? exactly exactly but yeah i i mean i i thought this movie was it felt like a good like tv movie mm -hmm. it is not a movie movie i don't know it, they had all what the, do you mean by that andres i <laughs> i don't know i i mean when you said like one of my favorite movies i i always think about what is the artistic side of of the movie besides like a narrative that i get i get it. and if i watch this as a kid i would like it yeah because it has all those it hits all the elements all the high school things you know yeah uh themes of like oh you get the girlfriend and you're you move into a new place and you need to get a you know you don't have friends you're the outlier you have to be a part of the team learn how to you know all of yeah. those things are there and they're cool but then it felt like pretty flat or every like the dialogue the the mm -hmm. even in in terms of just the cinematography the everything else felt like okay the tv movie lane not yeah. Uh, not yeah but it's beautiful it. you know it's beautiful like it's here's the thing too is that i feel like you know orlando jones was almost like the father figure that i never had because i only mm. had an israeli dad <laughs> and like whenever like the way he taught life lessons was like yeah if my arm hurt, you'd be like, oh, I had a friend who died of losing an arm because he actually was made the same complaints that you just did. And then he lost his arm and then he died of blood loss. Well, good luck with everything. And I'm like, what the Wild. fuck are you talking about? But Orlando Jones <laughs> teaches you life lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just like, uh, I see. Like, I remember I learned, I literally started being early slash on time. It's uh, you're on time if you're five minutes early. You're late if you're on time. And I'm like, mm -hmm. So wise, Orlando. Oh, that's cool. You learn that from the movie. Literally, yeah. That's a very Hollywood yeah. thing to say, yeah. <laughs> I be, I've always believed that. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want it. You never want to be the last person there. Yeah. Like, at least, I mean, in terms of, like, maybe a party you do. <laughs> but, like, if it's, like, a work function or you're meeting up, like, for dinner somewhere, like, you're not yeah. showing up fashionably late to that shit. No. You're showing up a little early so that it's... Yeah, yeah, we get started right when we get there. Sorry for being like three minutes. Yeah. I got in trouble <laughs> for curfews like that. If I was right on time for my curfew, I was late. So really? I'd always get in big trouble. I had mm. to be like 10 minutes early. What type of uh, trouble would you get in? Oh, if I had to do like push-ups and stuff and do laps in the pool. Your dad made you do yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> That's like, fucking sick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, it was like, I was like half drunk and it'd be like 1230 at night. I'd be like, Jesus. You'd have to do half lap. You'd have to do laps in the pool while you're drunk. He would watch me. Yeah. <laughs> it worked because you That's became such an outstanding citizen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'd be worried about an Allie Wood situation there. <laughs> <laughs> When you live the lives that we're living right now, mm -hmm. especially since I had the baby, yeah. I don't cook anymore. I get home exhausted. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Factor, I still have nutritious, delicious dinners. Such a game changer. You put it in the microwave, 
two minutes, boom, full meal. I mean, I like it so much. I I know I, I, I made you try my order again and again because that, that jalapeno cheddar chicken oh, yeah. with lime, oh, delicious. It was very delicious. And I'm glad we did that. We had that bonding moment. Right. <laughs> um, eat stress-free this spring with Factors Delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-catered, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Yeah, it's insane. There's also 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, I like that, snacks and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. I always have to stay fueled before we record podcasts. I used to not do it. I would get tired about halfway through and it really affect my performance and Absolutely. my producing. Yeah. Head to factormeals.com slash SOSVHS50 and use code SOSVHS50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off of your next box. That's code SOSVHS50 at factormeals.com slash SOSVHS50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. What about for you? Did it work the 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 structure, the the strong household structure? Uh, in my house? Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, yeah. Like, it's the thing is too is that I was the youngest of four kids, and like all of my siblings, uh, older than me, were were just nerds. Like, they never really got in trouble and stuff. And uh, my mom uh, had specifically told me she was like, you know, by the fourth kid, I thought I had had everything figured out, but you're just throwing. All types of shit I'd never seen before. Mm. You know, I was getting in trouble. I was like keying cars and stuff. Really? Yeah. I was, Did you uh, key my car? I still have the mark on it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Was it pink? <laughs> no. No, it wasn't. That one wasn't me, though. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you were bad. Keying cars is like bad. I, I keyed a car. Okay. But it was like a Beamer and like I, it was a, that belonged to a Jewish kid. So it's like they really fucking took it out of proportion. Okay. <laughs> I guess like when I was that age, I hit a car and it hit a family. <laughs> And stuff. So it hit a family. Yeah, I hit. I think. Yeah, you kidnapped the their kids. Yeah, no, I I was tortured them. I was drunk driving. I hit a car, and that car hit a fa a car with a full of family. And I was like, oh, oh. wow. Yeah, and I'm like, and I'm like saying you did bad stuff. And I'm like, wait a second, I did really bad stuff. Yeah, that's way like, worse, dude. Yeah. I never injured kids. <laughs> 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 they're fine. They're fine. They were yeah, fine. they're fine. It yeah. develops character. They're all made of rubber at that age. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Mexican on Mexican crime, so it evens out. We all get to go home. <laughs> the, like, the Mexicans can deal with this on their own. <laughs> yeah. What is it? What is the Mex Mexican drum line? Do, 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 is there a movie like that in? The I don't, yeah, I don't know if the Mexicans are super into drumming. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, who is? Like, I don't know if I Mexicans, don't think anyone is into drumming. Nick Cannon? No, yeah, Nick Cannon and Nick, yeah. uh, that crew. Black guys, <laughs> they don't get on the football team or into drumming. <laughs> That's what it really is. Mm. <laughs> yeah, were you guys, that? You guys fa fans of Nick Cannon? I, all I know about Nick Cannon is he impregnated one of the girls on Selling Sunset. Yeah, he doesn't know. Plus Mariah Carey. Yeah, oh, okay. A couple times, I think, right? Yeah, he oh, doesn't understand him. contraceptives. Oh, my God. The basic. You, you want to hear something crazy? It feels sure. really good without him. I told, I told, <laughs> I t it does. I told Pete this, this weekend. I get a call from Europe. Carlos. The, the, con the continent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, the okay. continent Europe. Yeah, okay. You know, very like... No, Europe, uh, Georgia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, Georgia in Europe. No, I, um, I get a call. <laughs> Pete's shaking his head. And she's like, Carlos, I have a positive pregnancy test. That's so funny. And she's like, I live in London. I'm going to Paris to see my family, but I don't want my parents to find out. And I'm like, okay, it's a whole thing. Like, you know... So I had to deal with that all weekend. But she worked on the movie Civil War. Wait, hold on. The story doesn't end there. Well, <laughs> Keep no, talking on that. Well, she's getting, she's I mean, <laughs> the way that you started, it, it seemed like a random call from Europe. This looks like someone you know, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is a girl I know <laughs> yeah, okay. who came to Yeah, LA. in the biblical sense. <laughs> yes, I, I know her. She came to LA. Uh, we hooked up a couple times without protection because it doesn't feel as good with protection. Right, we discussed that. She told me to go-go inside of her. and Go-go, is that what Mexicans call That's it? what the trash <laughs> They go it was a trash it. Tuesday term that okay. Esther has. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and um, I did, obviously. And then. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and um, 
she hit me up this weekend and was like okay. well and she's in paris you know babies come from paris everybody knows that i mean it's like a cool all the stork <laughs> it's so the I mean, it'd be kind of cool i have a did british you, baby who's did you might get a stork coming your way yeah the stork has a, a while to <laughs> fly <laughs> wait so hold on so you're having a kid no no no. she's taking care of it <laughs> 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 Wait a second. It will be right back. What <laughs> kind of fucking story is this? <laughs> well, we were just talking about kids, and I just want to, you know. Uh, That's you know. kind of not the story you, you just you told. You said she's keeping kind of the it. the opposite of a story. I did? You it's... told, I thought, she, I thought you told me she was keeping it. Oh, no, I never said that. Oh. No. I, oh, okay. I wouldn't even be at work today. I'd be, I'd be like in Vegas <laughs> with a gun. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take flying to London to help make sure she gets it. No, right? I've been, <laughs> no, I've been very sweet. She's coming to LA in May. Where I'm letting her stay with me, letting her. That's uh, very nice. <laughs> letting her. Very I said we're gonna go to dinner. We're gonna go on a walk. We're gonna have a good time. We got to see Civil War. You know. Yeah. So yeah, you guys are fans of Nick Cannon. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a trailblazer. That guy. We can cut this if it's too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, so dude. But everyone. One of those people love abortions. Yeah, <laughs> especially in Europe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, are they allowed there? They're definitely allowed there. This different countries, different rules, but yes. Yeah, I mean. Thank you. <laughs> imagine like if she was here. like a Texan, though. I'd be so screwed. No, yeah, Texas is a little rough. It's uh, yeah, whoever you lay with, it's if they get pregnant, they kind of stay pregnant. So you yeah, make sure it's a cool one, you know. Oh boy, <laughs> we would have the the bad friends SOS uh, nursery. <laughs> yes they maybe they need like some like health classes you know so uh um, when you're a kid i i feel those can help a little bit because there's multiple contraceptives oh we know, didn't have but no, in no, america I'm, i went to catholic school they don't do those they don't, don't you guys didn't have sex ed class no it, in in catholic schools they don't do stuff like that because the the idea is abstinence which obviously is obviously not it's not working that well no that's Probably why it public, always works but in public schools yeah. Yeah. they teach you everything about contraception and stuff like that and yeah. they say that it's way more helpful of course. oh yeah. yeah we had that at j school and stuff like it yeah. was in fourth grade we just all got into a classroom and it's like all right who knows all the words for dick but you can't do that <laughs> in like like even in texas public schools like you they don't like put like condoms on bananas anymore or something it's like they teach abstinence so where did nick cannon go to school yeah, Texas. that's the question. Not Texas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, by the looks of it, maybe a J school. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, it's true. Like he, I mean, he's more famous for that than from his artistic career. I feel like everybody makes fun of how many kids he has. Yeah. Because think- that's really, I, I don't know much of his music or anything, but I heard of all of his, his kids. Music? Because he's a rapper now. He has some... I mean, he hosted. Does he still Wild host? Out? I mean, he did Wild right, and Out. Right, he did Wild and Out. I, I, he was the host of Power 106. Is he still the host? Mm-mm, I don't think so. Dude, well, he, oh, right, because he was anti Semitic for a bit. Oh, oh okay. Remember? I like, think a, is it just one of those faces that. He was yeah, just yeah. like, Farrakhan's right, and then like said a couple things that he said that was like super not cool with Jews. Is, <laughs> is he healed now, though? Uh, I think he went and apologized, and then he got his block back on Power 106 for a minute, and they're like, dude, this just isn't working, man. Just get the fuck out of here. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I liked Power 106. Uh, still do. It's still around. Yeah, no, I just listen to podcasts mostly, but yeah. Yeah, you know, I do this thing. It's because uh, I listen to podcasts. Like, that's normally what I listen to in the car, but every now and then, if I ever go to a bar and I hear a song that I don't know, I, I like to hear what the kids are listening to, so mm. I'll put on Kiss, Kiss FM and... Just be like, what, what are the top 40s? And it's always just some, um, you know, have you ever heard of Jack Harlow? He's kind of a cool guy. Oh, yeah. I like Jack Harlow. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm Vanilla Baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you, but I ain't no killer, baby. Right. <laughs> I like this Justin uh, yeah. Bieber collab. That dude fucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's singing about how he doesn't fuck as hard as everyone wants him to. I'm like, yeah, what a flex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so we met Young Gravy recently. Like, oh yeah that he seems so cool yeah he was like the coolest guy but you know he lays it down right he just <laughs> he just smells like rank pussy probably wait yeah what does he smell like like, be- <laughs> like beautiful like, pu- oh, like good pussy like yeah like <laughs> flowery yeah flowery beautiful nor <laughs> norwegian <laughs> pussy yeah. <laughs> white yeah like, white pussy he smells like <laughs> white pussy yeah <laughs> that's what you want to say my like norwegian snow, <laughs> snow falling Icelandic on pussy they're just in a pod having sex with snow around them that's how i imagine he does it <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> no yeah young gravy's a fun one what gang are we repping with the neon yellow 
Yeah, I don't. But, I mean, the movie that they done, they're not in gangs. I think they can't. They probably couldn't do blue or red on purpose. All no, the, but they were majority blue. It was blue and gold. Like yeah, school oh, colors. Gold. School okay. colors. And then the other yeah. ones were purple. Was just yeah, purple. Purple and Laker white. Colors. Right. Okay. And they had access to P.D. Pablo, which is super cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was, you know, it was so funny. Um, I remember like the 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 Dark Knight of the Soul part of that movie where he's just like, oh, everyone found out I can't read oh, yeah. music. And so he had to like. I knew it from the beginning. The moment they they lay down the rules, what are the rules? I, and they only say the only thing they say like everybody has to know how to read music, you know? right? And then what is the the next clue is that he the audition he just does it on his own, right? He just like follow the who memorizes an audition piece exactly. <laughs> in slow motion. I'm like, wait, so he has like a Marvel superpower? He's too? like he can, yeah. I'm like that's like what, repeated immediately. But didn't like only like Beethoven and people like that were able to do things. Maybe like that? he is like the Beethoven of sneers. He was, yeah, he's like the Kanye West of <laughs> snare drums. Mm. <laughs> they went through the same phase apparently. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you hear like stories about Kanye where it's like he did um yeah. uh, like all of the lights and he just started on doing like really shitty like synth or gang. Like, dude, mm-hmm. this sounds like trash. But like Kanye thinks in terms of like symphonies and orchestras. So you're mm-hmm. hearing like one of 50 layers that he's going to put on and you're like, oh yeah, shit, fucking put Rihanna on this track. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I think that's how Bieber does it too. How Bieber does it also? Yeah, he thinks in, in terms of like orchestra. Okay. Like it's all layer by layer. It's actually fascinating to huh. watch. There's videos of him like telling uh, bands how to like create a song in real time. And I'm like, oh, Justin Bieber's extremely talented. He probably hmm. learned that from Diddy. From who? <laughs> Diddy? From Diddy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I thought Luda was his like uh mentor. Wait, was Diddy his mentor? No, his mentor is um Usher. Usher. Yeah, that's right. Usher, Usher, Usher well, there we go. Him. Connection to Diddy. Yeah. I tell Usher him. Yeah. Discovered him when he was like, I don't know, eight or nine and playing the drums and, and all of that yeah. stuff. And I was just like, you gotta we gotta hang with Diddy, man. He's Nick he'll, he'll take care definitely of you. went to Diddy's house, right? <sighs> How fucking crazy is this Diddy stuff? It's insane. How fucking crazy <laughs> Every is it? day is getting worse and worse. And it's not only that, it's like it's all fifty cent that did this. Yeah. He is like one of the most dangerous people in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, because he comes at you. But with in like, a good way, you know, like, like a he's, mafia mentality. Right. He's like the dark knight. <laughs> of like of justice in yeah. Hollywood. He's he just like, from- hey, everyone fucks kids at this guy's like party and like this wild shit that goes on, and then they just like all the things resurface. Like, what was it? Have you guys seen the uh, uh, Mike Tyson was on some like morning show with Diddy, and like he had to literally. There's a part where he's taking his hand and like moving it to the left, like moving it away from him. Like Diddy is just like trying to like finger the inside of his knee or something. Oh God. Fucking what? wild, dude. <laughs> this dude is making passes at Mike Tyson in his prime. <laughs> well, going back to Drumline. Yeah. <laughs> Let's <laughs> Um what, do you guys do you guys remember Orlando Jones and that seven up commercial makes seven up yours? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. He was in everything. He was in commercials and movies. He was in a lot of stuff. I think it was in Office Space for a little, for a bit. There was a like we came to the door. He was selling magazines and he was pretending like he was like mentally slow. Like he was in he was in that movie. He was in so much stuff. Right, Evolution. I think with David. Yes. Is that yeah. Name of that movie. Uh huh. The yeah. Replacements with Keanu Reeves. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he just kind of faded out. Yeah, he disappeared. Yeah. Was there some that he did, or he just kind of faded out? I think he faded you know, like out. Terry Crews, like someone touched my dick or something, or no? No, I don't no, think that happened. No. He still, I mean, that only helped Terry Crews' career in reality. <laughs> but <it was> like, <laughs> yeah, because now he works to this day, actually. But I mean, he had to get traumatized in the process. But like, as much? <laughs> I haven't seen Terry in a minute, dude. <laughs> I feel like he's so famous. I really do. I feel like he's so relevant online. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's still very much alive in gift <laughs> format. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but uh, pumping his fucking. But from this movie, <laughs> from we'll this check movie, on obviously, okay. <laughs> Nick Cannon is still known. I don't think as an actor, but he, right, he is there, and then so is Aldana. Obviously, she yeah. did become a big star. Guardians of the Galaxy. <coughs> yeah, I rewatched yeah. one and two this weekend. Like an idiot. <clears throat> Why? Those are good ones. Well, yeah, no, it was just, no, it's not. It's an idiot move because like I had other things to do, but I had to watch two Marvel movies in a row. I'm playing the video game right now uh-huh. and I'm almost done. So I'm yeah. sad that I'm almost <clears throat> done with it. 
So I had to go watch some movies to get my phone. <laughs> is, is the video game based on one of them in specific or the entire it, timeline? It's... Or is it a continuation, like a B-side? It's not a continuation. It's just more of like a side story, but it's so fucking good and I'm so surprised. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Highly recommend it. Yeah, Gomorrah. Yeah. <laughs> you can have Gomorrah fight, like you press triangle, or L1, then triangle, and she like, you know, like she slices fights. people and stuff. I'm like, oh, oh thank you, Gomorrah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get up to high places get gamora and she can help you up mm. yeah, i think i think great. zoe's uh breakout was this definitely avatar right like where she became no no I or mean, was it i don't know any i'm trying to remember she, anything she before. star trek before avatar that's right before that was before avatar yeah oh, w- was it yeah wait maybe first like avatar wait which yeah. star trek no well, oh nine star trek, the 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 jj abrams uh, uh star trek with What's Chris the Pine. Chris, Chris Pine. Yeah. They might have been like 18 months apart or something because they were around. Avatar and all that. But before that, she was already pretty well known, I think. Yeah. If she's I don't know how many us. people recognize her from Avatar. I mean, obviously she. Yeah. Well, right. She was in full. <laughs> she's yeah. in full blue mm-hmm. yeah, suit. Tail and ears and stuff. But yeah, she's, she's, she's Avatar. I Probably same year. Uh, Two, 2009? Yeah. Mm. And then, yeah, I think Guardians of the Galaxy gave her a big push. Mm-hmm. I, moved, I just like, wish Colum Orlando. Vienna. I just wish Orlando Jones was still around because I loved him so much in Drumline. I don't know what it was. I just I missed him. I saw Orlando Jones like I miss this guy. I miss he, seeing him. Yeah. He's cool. He's very charismatic. He was a staple. He was a big part of Mad TV. Like mm-hmm. that's where he was on my radar from. Yeah. Um, and you know what's funny about Drumline is that I didn't realize like. It, Drumline's a one and done for me, right? It's just like, this is perfect. Like, before you needed sequels for everything. Right. And then, like, once it became, like, known Nothing. to the podcast universe that I'm a big fan of Drumline, they're like, <laughs> hey, have you seen Drumline 2? And it kind of, like, startled me. I was like, why would you... Like, what, are you going to make, like, a fucking Moby Dick Part 2 also? Mm. Like, we don't need a sequel to this. <laughs> yeah. This is an epic... Like, this is a masterpiece. It doesn't need any more iteration. And I've been terrified to even attempt to try and watch Drumline oh, 2. Maybe I saw the when, season where when he... I was looking for Drumline, I saw the two. It was like, oh. I'm kind of terrified to watch it because there's no way they got any of this. Yeah, I got enough with one. Two. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're like, yeah, th- this is the entire story. Like, there's no yeah. unturned stones. <laughs> I watched it on 1.5 speed. <laughs> Drumline? Mm-hmm. Why? So he, How he was, dare you, dude? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like a Gen Z, like, I need to watch this fast. I mean, I got all the, I listen to podcasts on 1.75 speed, so it's even slower for me at 1.5. Oh, cool. So, uh, like in a true uh, film fanatic fashion, <laughs> you're watching films the way they weren't meant uh, to, uh, to be watched. <laughs> oh, they all know this about me. I watched Oppenheimer for the first time on my iPad, and I was like, I loved it. All right, I can't knock that because I watched it for the first time on the flight over here on my phone. All right, um, thank you. Oh, are you serious? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I love that. Worse. Yeah, American Airlines is kind of like a, it's a really cool library, but you have to watch it on your phone. Yeah, I don't love American Airlines, although they're doing a new thing where you can bring your dog on board, which is really awesome. Delta is the move. Delta? Yeah, their TVs have everything. Okay. And live TV. Oh. But still, for a movie like that, that's too small of a screen. Plus, the sound... You have to have really good headphones for that. Yeah, it wasn't like it, I feel like it didn't land. Like it was, Probably a lot, was so boring. It was the, very boring. A lot yeah. like every now and then, like the whole like texture and shit of like the the yeah high the the atomic reactions happening. Yeah. Like that yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then because it's a very immersive movie, but you have to watch it in that. I think it's three hours long. You have to watch it in that. Well, I finally Oppenheimer. watched the the sex scene in Oppenheimer, and I was mm. like, this is so much. Like everyone said, it was weird. But yeah. it's even weirder than that. <laughs> yes, I don't think Christopher Nolan has ever had sex is why. <laughs> right. Has anyone ever had sex where you're just sitting in a chair like this and then the other person's just straddling, like moving stuff around? Like Killian wasn't moving at all. I, mean, yeah. I know like that part was kind of dark. Like, a fantasy and a yeah. metaphor and stuff, but like she's like, this ain't this ain't it. Like unless it's just like a massive monster dong where it's like it really doesn't need to move. I think what it's like, like a big uh, cannon. Side yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. think that was the the point of that. Scene. All right, then I missed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched it on a plane, Andres. <laughs> I think any British sex scene isn't going to be that great. That any sexy? sex scene? Yeah, it won't be that like fun. Like, I, can you imagine one in Ted Lasso? It'd be no, so boring. <laughs> that's that's what you pick as a British. 
Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, in the movie Snatch. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Okay, but there's yeah. no fucking in the movie Snatch. That's why. Uh, yeah, so it would be so oh, boring. yeah, I see. It would be so boring. Like Guy Ritchie doesn't do sex. Well, there was fucking in, in uh, Peaky Blinders. No, yeah, those were boring too. <laughs> Very transactional. I just see- like, all right, let me lift my dress. Is Ooh, that new done? movie or so good, The Gentleman? The Guy Ritchie? On Netflix. It's okay. Okay. It's very Guy Ritchie, so, I mean, if you like that style. He made a movie called The Gentle One. I, yeah, I right. didn't love it. Yeah. Are people wearing, like, really cool tracksuits in, in the show, too? Yeah, yeah. They, they, Is it about that gang? It's not a, exactly the same thing, but it's the same world. Yeah, okay. Charlie Hunnam in here? No, it's, uh, what's his name? Theo. Theo James. Yeah, the guy from uh, the last season of, what's that great show I love? What's that show on HBO? White Lotus. Yeah, White Lotus. He played the asshole. He's on uh, Hunger Games. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I only saw season one of Light Lo- White Lotus, and uh, like recently, within the last so couple good. months. Yeah. And then season two, I was just like, they're oh, both Italy. Both really good. There's so many subtitles. I'm like, I'm not trying to read, dude. It's awesome. <laughs> I know it's good, but. <laughs> oh, I know. Subtitles. As well. I was watching a movie about uh, called Beyond Utopia about North Korea and defect- <clears throat> like defectors. I was like, yeah, also, how can you read uh, 1.5? Oh, it's not hard. I can I can literally do it. <laughs> oh, it's like hooked on phonics stuff. That's yeah. how they get you to read. Which I use. <laughs> I used that when I was a kid. My sister made fun of me, and I was like, "What? It's it's not cool to read." <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, she's like, "No, it's Nickelodeon time, loser." <laughs> oh yeah, that makes a lot of wow. Watching subtitles at one point five speed would totally get you to start reading super fast. <laughs> Yeah, I it's mean, actually kind of genius if your intention is to learn how to read fast and not to enjoy the movie. Well, it's not <laughs> the point. So I do it with podcasts and I know we're going on a tangent here, but I've told Andres this at that speed, you can really feel and hear the cadences and the voices. And what re- is revealed the most is lying. When people stutter, you can really feel it like when they're not sure of what they're talking about. Like, I can tell, basically. So at that speed, I can always tell when people are lying or not. I'm so not on board with this trick. I want you to try it. I love it. Because when people are like, uh, uh I have uh, done it. But I'm oh, like, yeah, this sucks, dude. It's the, it's the, I've been doing it for like 10 years. <laughs> oh yeah. How long have you been in podcasting? <laughs> like 12 years. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, you consume a lot more content, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I think for movies... I and I get the TikTok generation likes things very fast, mm-hmm. but I think part of the enjoyment of like a movie is like it could go slow and still be interesting. Right, it could have no dialogue and be interesting. You know, it's supposed to have like I feel yeah. like the like it's especially films you're supposed to watch them the way they're supposed to be watched. Right. Yeah. Like if something's shot, uh, you know, seventy millimeter or whatever. Like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. You should like if it's a movie that you're excited about, you should go see it. Uh, on an IMAX screen or something like that. Right. You know? Absolutely. Or on your phone at 1.75. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, a nice big iPhone. Different experience. But, yeah. <laughs> Guys, I got the Max. <laughs> yeah, I do. I got the, the Max Pro. Pro Max. <laughs> I think it's like a 13. I need the new one. <laughs> so, wait a second. How old were you in two, 2002? Uh, 2002, I was probably in eighth grade. So, right around bar mitzvah age. Like right. 13-ish. So you in formative you, was this movie in the theaters back then or was it a movie I, that you watch on TV? What's funny is that I never saw it in the theaters. Right. Because I don't think I had any friends that were like, oh, drumline. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I watched it, uh, you know, come on TV. And it was one of those ones that were just playing like 24 seven. So eventually I caught it one time. I think it was probably FX or something that was playing it. Um, and yeah. And then I just like, yo, this was kind of dope. And then I just watched it every time it came on to the point where it's like. Some people could recite Step Brothers and old school. I could recite Drum. Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah. Wait, what are your guys' like guilty pleasure movies? I mean, I don't feel guilty about this pleasure. Right. But, mm. Like, what's the shittiest movie that you like that you wouldn't be like, you know, you're on camera, so it's very hard for you to probably get embarrassed. But like, How to Be Single. How to Be Single? That movie with Dakota Johnson and Rebel Wilson when she was fat. Mm. Isn't it called How to Be Single? In New York. I, I know the movie you're talking about, but I just, yeah. I really like that movie. It's like Damon Wayans Jr. is in it. Like, yeah. Allison Brie. Mine's The Wedding Planner. 
<laughs> the wedding planner with uh, J Lo and Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, mm, so interesting. Interesting. What about you, Andres? I'm I'm trying to think of like what is embarrassingly fun for reality me TV. I think for you, <sighs> I hate reality so much. But it doesn't like entertain you ever. It does not. It makes me think like people are idiots everywhere. So I, I mean, my wife sees it, sees it all the time, and I just I have to stand up and go to a different room. I can't. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel better about myself. It makes me realize. I get I'm, that. I get that. Yeah. But it's like. Uh, why is everybody like you know that? No, I don't. I hate. But you're also able to see the seams. Like my like my lady also watches so much like reality trash. Yeah. And because we're in it, you're like that is yeah. such a clearly produced line. Oh, totally. Like oh, yeah. the producers are just feeding this shit. Like this isn't or, real or drama. The, the, like the cuts, you know, you can right. totally see mm-hmm. like, how they expand their their yeah. moments and how they exactly where you're watching literally like the same take, like literally mm-hmm. the same like mm. fifteen frames. Where like they're just reusing this shit to make it seem like there was a big fucking pause. Right, right. Um, and if you watch the old stuff, so on, a, I think on Prime. They have like old school flavor of love and like rock of love and I love New York, like all those old school (laughs) ones. And what's crazy about it for some reason. And then like you, you you think about when they filmed it and like some PA on set or like some DP that didn't know what they were talking about was like, Oh, this camera only shoots four, three. This one only shoots 69. Yeah, that's fine. Just Uh, fucking throw it all. Because now what happens that everything's 69, all the confessionals are in four, three. And then like all the action is in 16, nine. You're like, (laughs) <laughs> why aren't they just blowing one of these up or just making everything forth like right. fucking this is so stupid <laughs> and then you know and then I like complain about that to my girl who's not in entertainment she's like yeah fucking 4-3 that's so stupid <laughs> right 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 people don't care yeah I have no. more guilty pleasure TV shows I love like I like The Hills like I love shows like that The Hills like that rea- like the the real life version of the OC is that yeah, what it was yeah okay. like I like stuff like that just like yeah. escapism like it's such an it's so the opposite of comedy. No one is funny. They're not even smart enough to be funny. Like all these right. things that I'm like, I just want to, it's like, uh, it's like watching a cigarette is think is how I used to say it. It's watching like, a cigarette. It's like, Being it's, yeah, it's just like the, it's like the equivalent of smoking a cigarette for your brain. It's like bad for you, but uh, you like it. Interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I can watch almost everything. My, my bar is low. I, I am pretty so, generous with movies in general, knowing how, much it takes to make one yeah right so and i i usually go to see something with the intention to like it not to shit on it but right. did, you, did you have fun with drumline that. did you did you i i i thought I, it was fun but did you i have enjoyed fun it that? i enjoyed it I, I thought it was like you know one of immediately after you started i knew how it was gonna go because i've seen so many movies yeah in that vein of yeah. like a story but i i enjoyed it yeah it was it's an easy watch i, I just yeah <clears throat> i laughed a lot yeah. Like Nick Cannon's like lines were so funny. Fluff Daddy. Yeah, Fluff Daddy was funny. <laughs> like him being like like it's it, everything is everything, mom. And she and then he there's a pause and he's like, "Yeah, that means everything's all good." <laughs> <laughs> everything is everything. By the way, can I, I like, just Hey, can I challenge P2 to, you know, I'm P4 oh, yeah, and that challenge was fucking P2. Great. Oh yeah. No. yeah. And then they're like in the practice, like in the changing room and he's teaching like the bass drum. He was like, no, you gotta like, fuck. Like how yeah. do you <laughs> fuck dude? And then like the girls are walking by and they're like, yo, those two dudes are just like fucking in there. And they're like, just like, ah, yeah. that's how you do it. And it's like, no, <laughs> this is wild. This is yeah. not something you should be doing. <laughs> yo, <laughs> fucking if Tarantino directed Drumline. Oh no. Oh man. <laughs> that would be a good movie. Yeah. They they would actually fuck the drum. Yeah, dude. They would actually fuck the drum. That'd be great. Yo, I would I would pay money to that. Uh, Go fund me. (laughs) Yeah, I think he would love to do this movie. That was his tenth film, Drumline Three. (laughs) You hear? Directed by Tarantino. So let's just talk about this. Speaking of Tarantino, the rumor about Shane Gillis being the critic. Have you heard this? No. Oh right, that he the the, the that's the rumor right that now. he's being cast in the tent as film? the lead. Uh, no way, that's the rumor right Brad now. Peterson I heard that rumor. That it's the rumor all over. That he wanted Tom Cruise and Shane Gillis. I'm telling you, it's the rumor. I I saw it and I was like, "There's no way that world will end if that's the case." But it is kind of crazy. How did that rumor start? Like, who was the first one that picked it up? Oh, he, probably he, it, himself. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I. It's just like making the rounds on like those YouTube like uh, comedy podcast commentary. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And 
I don't know. Oh, like Joke World or something? Yeah, something exactly like that. Like that. Um, Sam Jackson is in the movie. So he's like, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm like... It's, I mean, maybe. Maybe he's a great actor. I haven't seen it. I just don't buy that Tarantino ends with his 10th film, the lead not being like a classic Hollywood person. I mean, you know... Yeah, I think he wants Tom Cruise and, and Brad Pitt... God, Tom, I, when you told me Tom Cruise was going to be in a Tarantino movie, I freaked out. Yeah. It's going to be so you, cool. Yeah, I, we'll see if that ends I up hope happening. It does. But yeah. I think He'll, he tried to get him for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, no? Tom he Cruise. He did. As for Leo? As no, Brad Pitt. Oh, as Brad Pitt. Oh, but then he wow. thought that Brad Pitt and, and Leo had a better chemistry and they look more alike for the. Yeah. Mm. That's Brad Pitt's Oscar, by the way. So yeah. Yeah, he's so great in that. So good. I love when he takes his shirt off. On the roof. <laughs> Why is that funny? When he takes his shirt off, it's awesome. He looks so good. He does look good. I know what you mean. I know. So does Chris Pratt in Guardians, by the way. When he goes to jail in the beginning of the first one, I was like, oh, yeah. whoa, this guy's jacked. He's a beefcake. Man, bringing a whole new term to the, to, or a whole new meaning to the term uh, male gaze, huh? Yeah. <laughs> With Carlos, it's always a surprise, you know? Male, bo male, gazing male bodies can be beautiful. <laughs> I, I, no, wish, I agree. Dude, those cum gutters are always so good to look at. I wish Nick Cannon had a shirt off too. Yeah, I'm trying. To, you know what's funny? I'm trying to think if I've probably ever seen him with tats. a shirt off. I feel like Nick Cannon has one of those body types where he probably has that like indent inside of his chest. Like, so yeah. true. That you could like eat yeah. cereal out of. Like I, I don't think I've ever seen it, but I, if I saw that, I'd be like, totally would have thought that he did. Yeah, you know? he, yeah. <laughs> There's no shirtless moments in this movie. Yeah, which is probably on purpose because that's. I feel like that was a thing in the 2000s. Like, take your shirt off. Is it? Was that? <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Go ahead. Maybe keep keep, yeah. keep going on this thought. I feel like I feel like in movies, men took their shirts off like to show that they were jacked. And didn't the, they recently? <laughs> no, like back it, then. Back then, in like the 2000s, it was like more common. To like, like name a name a movie. <laughs> <laughs> One movie. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. In two th that was 2010. No way. That's no, no. I'm trying like to something like Brad Pitt in Troy, you or, know? Yeah, Captain Ron. There. <laughs> there. Captain Ron. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Over, I'm in Guardians <laughs> World. Kurt Russell was in it. <laughs> Inner Space with Martin Short. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> Yo, you know what? I just realized that really imprinted in my head. Remember that scene where she like fucks the cowboys? Like, I never take my boots off. <laughs> it's so like that movie like tripped me out that he was inside a body. Yeah. It, like kind of it messed me up for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meg Ryan was it, in that, right? Yeah, and it's Martin Short. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Martin, Martin Short's inside you. That's kind of you know No no no. <laughs> Wait, was it Martin Short was inside Dennis Quaid or Den no Dennis Quaid Wait, was there? I Martin see. Okay, Dennis okay. Quaid that's yeah. better. That's like, better than capsule. Yo, and what about fucking Dennis's brother? You guys, you guys watching him on? Oh, uh, Randy, it's, dude. Oh, Randy's yeah. a wildly good for, follow. <laughs> for a while now, he's been out of it. Oh yeah, for years. Yeah, I'd say probably the better part of a decade. He's just like putting on strobe lights and being like, Donald Trump's fucking my wife, and he just puts on a Donald <laughs> Trump mask. <laughs> oh my fucks god, his wife, and it's just like, what the? Fuck? What? Randy, what are we doing, man? That is so scary. Check in with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> for your brother, Jesus. No, yeah, Randy's a great follow. <laughs> Um, you, guys, <laughs> you you throw me off a lot with this podcast because uh, thinking know. about this movie, you guys haven't talked about this movie at, at all. But I'm just going on tangents. I'm just finding things that yeah, yeah, yeah. Are fun. What, what was your guys' favorite scene of the movie? Mm -hmm. I'll, t I'll I'll go. Uh, it's the uh, the drum off with the band leader. <laughs> Where oh, when uh, they record where, the yeah, where they're recording and they're and they're like, oh, you think you're the man, and they're and they're going back. And I I oh, legitimately and laughed they, and out when loud. When this moves like that, yeah, where they fucking oh, go right yeah. through each other's eyes. <laughs> oh, I'd laugh so hard. I was like, this is amazing. You uh, know, yeah, when he when he plays on the other person's like drum, you know. And that's like, oh, I need to punch in it now. The fight. Yeah, fight. there's a brawl. <laughs> uh, my favorite scene. So it's like right after the riot. Where, uh, what's her name in Guardians? Uh, Gamora. Gamora. Where Gamora, uh, she, like, that's where she's he's supposed Lila to meet her parents. Movie. Yeah. Uh, she's supposed to meet her parents, um, and she's, like, so, too embarrassed to meet him. And then afterwards, she, like, comes up to him at the cafeteria, and he's, like, oh. all, like, sad boy shit. Yeah. And he's, like, oh, you don't know what it's like? To so someone like left leaves hung. you hanging. Yeah, yeah let me show you. And <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, damn, dude, 
missed and dismissed, bro. Got her. <laughs> That's such a bad move, though, on his part because he's a freshman. Like, it's too cocky. Like, yeah, he's entirely. I'm like hitting the mic with these drums. Um, he's entirely way too cocky throughout the entire movie. Like, that movie is hubris. Yeah, it's yeah. just like it doesn't work in the real world. Like, if you have a hot girl who's older than you and you like talk to her that way, she'll be like, all right, later. Right. Like, like, but like his response to everyone's like, oh, Dr. Lee didn't tell you about me. Like that, that's like his <laughs> response to any time anyone like not giving him cred. Yeah, she's, I think she does a pretty good job of making, walking that line between she's way too easy mm. for him, you know, and also being cool and all of that. So she, she, I think she does like, because her character is pretty much paper thin. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, she also knows how to, like, uh, uh, she seduced him with that uh, stomping scene. Right. With her sororities. And it's just like, no, see, she's she's got another she layer has, to her. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She she knows she, how to dance. Yeah. yeah she has was sisters. Hot. That was a hot scene. It was like, hot hey. scene. Yeah. There's a scene where, like, the senior or whatever is like, yo, I'm going to give him the solo. He's going to he's gonna mess this up as his first solo during a game. Yeah. Program. Oh, right. And he does well. He doesn't freeze. Yeah, but I'm like, that's not how you write movies or stories. They have to freeze. Right. And then it just goes well. (laughs) Yeah. It it was like watching Entourage or something. I mean, that moment, I guess, his freezing moment comes as like he doesn't know how to read music. But that's one moment. I was, and it comes an hour and 10 into the movie, and I'm like, yo. Look, this the, has been the better movie, <laughs> the better movie in terms of like this type of stuff, I think like with a better like relationship is like Dirty Dancing, you know? Yes. Because at the same time, you have the same elements, like the bad boy, the good girl, the the growing up, the, you know, the getting very good at one thing. Yeah. But good music. Right. Uh, but it more in like, a, I, don't, I think like a better, you know. I don't know. Well, I guess Dirty Dancing is all white people, so yeah. people, <laughs> it's not because of that. Uh, yeah, anyway, I just feel like I've seen that story so many times in so many different ways. That There's I wasn't obstacles, surprised. though, at the beginning. Like, right, like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, the, the, the obstacles are betterly handled in other movies. Yeah. Or, like, those moments really mean something. This because is one of the their breakup is a, is a breakup that lasts two seconds. Right. Yeah. That it, ne- it never feels real. Like, he will get her back. Right. There's honestly zero stakes. <laughs> like, anytime someone gets, mm-hmm. something gets taken away, it gets given right back. Right back. Like, so yeah. It's, it has an easy... takes it back at the end, and it's like, so you broke all your rules. Yeah. Right. Because even at the end, I mean, spoiler alert, this movie did come out, like, a little after 9-11. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, like, Orlando, Dr. Lee really fucking like finally like puts the smack down on nick cannon yeah it's like you're Devin, out, of the, out of the drum line you can't read here's the sheet music for tomorrow's game can you even read it and it's just like oh shit he's gonna be benched for a full year until he knows how to read and it's like hey you know what we have the most important fucking thing of the year that's about to happen fuck all these punishments why don't you just go in and have a good Insane. time yeah yeah, Insane. and he has his moment at the end, which you know is going to happen based on everything you've seen. Mm-hmm. Right. The only moment I was like, oh, he's going to be benched for a year. And it's like, no way. You, you know what the real stakes were was the <laughs> alumni association, you know, the funding, right? Of like, hey, yeah. you got to loosen up and be more like Morris Brown, right? right. Like we need that. We need we that need to get us there. So that was the stakes. That was like, I got to try something different or else we're done. So but, let me take a risk maybe. And right. Because Dr. Lee also had like a really big arc in that movie. Like it was, yeah. I'd say it's like but him and Nick Tanner are the it. two big characters. Did you even care about that arc though? Because it didn't really affect me. No, yeah, dude, you got to see a nerd turn into like a, hey, maybe. I should not be such a nerd all the so, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flight of the Bumblebees, go. Yeah. And he's just Yo, vibing. Flight of the Bumblebee, and like fucking the entire audience is just going to sleep. And like, Ooh, yeah, that is insane music. to do. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know. I, I, because I didn't kind of buy that argument, like, as, like we said before, like, of like, that classic as music is cool and this other music is not cool mm-hmm. when he's the only one seeing it that way anyway. Yeah. But yeah, you can tell, I don't know. Because it wasn't a movie about, oh, he has to win everybody over with his classical music. No, it was about, oh, he's going to sell out. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. It's just like, oh, I can't like uh, have artistic integrity. Right. I have to fucking play the latest what? P.D. Pablo song? (laughs) Right, right, right. I thought P.D. Pablo. So this was my first time watching. I thought P.D. Pablo was going to do Freak a Leak. When he came out, I was like, oh, I hope he, I hope they do a freak cover. <laughs> North Carolina, come on a razor, yeah. take your shirt off. <laughs> yep. 
Oh, it's fucking great though. Really good remix. Really good rendition of yeah. it. <laughs> All you Gen Z Zers out there don't know Petey Pablo. <laughs> Well, it was like, yeah, he was a flash in the pan. Like, I feel like, it, wait, actually, wait, Freak a Leak, when did that come out? That came out, I feel like that was early 2000s. Like, I wouldn't say 2004. Yeah. It's like, he was like on the trajectory of Nelly. Right. But like, Nelly was just like around for, I want to say, like a five year period. And then PD Paul was just like, yeah, sorry, I only got two. <laughs> I only got two songs and that, that's all I got. But Oh, yeah. And now now there's a song with a, a Freaker League sample. I, I don't know the artist, but oh. they use <laughs> his music in a, in a new in a new rap song. I was like, everyone's like, I know nobody knows PD Pablo. That's a PD Pablo Freaker League song. <laughs> Freaker League sounds like something you would do weird at a bathroom. <laughs> Javona, <laughs> Crystal. Oh, I already know what it would be. You see a guy peeing and you're like, turn around. <laughs> don't stop don't stop peeing and then he just pees on you yeah in your mouth that's crazy dude I, that's not freak a lick carlos <laughs> i'm i know what freak a lick's about lane. have you guys seen those reels which one uh it's like a fa- it's like a fantasy where it's just like it's like nightmare like a nightmare that you would have about peeing in public and then just people come and be like hey bro are you peeing and then you're just peeing on everyone accidentally have you guys seen those no, no. just my awesome. just my algorithm <laughs> yeah, no one else has a like peeing on people <laughs> late in there That's so all right funny. I wanna <laughs> put earmuffs on my phone because after this i want to start getting weird algorithms <laughs> Andres, i'll start sending you stuff no no thank you, thank you. No, i'm we'll, good we'll I'll send you freak a leak. <laughs> oh, I sent too many uh, bad DMs to Bobby this weekend, and he got mad. What did you send, send him? Uh, an African orphan who looks like he he's he has some sort of condition where he looks like he has a fin on his head, and then <laughs> there's another one with like a cleft forehead. Yeah, exactly. Sick. And then there was another <laughs> one with it's the repeat we've been doing of the baby with only half a face. <sighs> So Jesus Christ, Carlos, <laughs> that's pretty upsetting, man. What? That's worse than the stuff Tom sends me. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is more bad friends talk. <laughs> this goes over better there. <laughs> it goes better with the wild people. Yeah, <laughs> I'm too normal for you guys. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, so what 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 do you think people should watch this movie? What is the the essence of this movie that you think? Oh, if I've never heard of drum line because black lives matter it's well sorry sorry sorry. (laughs) it's honestly just fun it's a fun movie like there's there's so many movies that i've seen where it's like yeah these aren't good but they're fun like the meg that's fun deep blue sea that's fun hell yeah the meg 2 that's fun all right these are all shark movies But, (laughs) but there's like the same reason why you watch troll 2 or the room you know where it's just like yeah this is objectively bad but it's a fun ride. Mm. And like you could watch it multiple times and you'll notice different well me I don't know how many different new things you'll notice in a second watching of Drumline, but <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It's just fun. It's a good fun mm. time and you know if you need to kill 2 hours like that's that's what you do. What about you Carlos? I I just thought it was fun as hell. I I I texted you and Pete last night and I was I was texting y'all because I was like, I'm having so much fun watching this laughing that I want to tell my friends. Like it was just a fun time. And, um, I think it's a great throwback to two thousands movies, like simpler times, uh, more just simple, uh, three act movies. It's very, I think it's relaxing. Yeah. Like put it on. You don't want to think too much. Right. Like not it's every a good background movie. Yeah. Not everything has to be Oppenheimer or even like podcast city. We watch a lot of podcasts and like, you know, all of a sudden it'll be like, Hey, did you hear about Biden this week or something? It's like, sometimes I just want to watch drumline, you know? Yeah. Like I just love stuff like this. Hell yeah. You it's know, an escape. That's the coolest sentence. Like sometimes I just want to watch drumline. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and I got to tell you this, is my first time watching it. And now I'm like, Oh, I think I'm going to go like on a, like a, like a black movie run from the two thousands because it feels so like my dad would leave me at the movies with my sister. And after we saw all the white movies, we would go to the black. No, I'm joking. But <laughs> no, <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> no, but like I grew up just like living in theaters for like eight hours at a time so movies like this really bring me back to that time and so it's very it was nice to watch yeah it's good yeah time. i think like the first do you guys remember the opening of the movie the first image of the movie yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh uh the his high school graduation right yeah and yeah. you the first image you see like a sea of like purple right they are all wearing their 
gums and everybody's sitting normal except for one person was like oh yeah really, like leaning back so you see like there's one piece out of the puzzle that doesn't fit the white shirt he's wearing like the black and then know. the camera goes down and you see him and then he joins <laughs> and i think like, okay you know from that first image i thought okay maybe we're in good hands and then i thought look it's uh like i said a fun b movie um <clears throat> really positive right like at a time where like Mm -hmm. It's like there's no darkness in this movie. Well, no. right, yeah, nine eleven it just happened. We needed some some light. It's a light, light, light <laughs> yeah. stuff. Easy, easy, fun. Uh, it was a nine eleven movie without having towers. Right, music, fun music. <laughs> yeah, no, no towers. It's also a nine eleven movie in the sense that no Muslims. <laughs> the what? the Muslim ban. <laughs> well, there were Nick Cannon was in it. He's Muslim. Yeah. Jesus. What fucking... is he really? I'm pretty sure. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm calling. We're, I'm not calling saying, <laughs> we're not saying he did it. Yeah, I'm calling Homeland Security. <laughs> we're not saying he did it. It's <laughs> yeah. like a Bush conspiracy. Oh, 9-11 happens and you put a Muslim as your star in a movie a year Nick later? Cannon did 9-11. Everyone knows that. Yeah, <laughs> him and Bush. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I was on Nick the Cannon coordinated with the administration to allow 9-11. <laughs> yeah. That's the title of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nick Cannon did 9-11. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So down. It's like, the How many thumbnail more? is going to be great. That'll be good for the algo. <laughs> yeah. I think we just fucked with the algo by saying 9-11 a million times. Uh, there was a bunch of stuff you said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to, this is going to go up in the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nada, thank you so much for joining us. It was so much fun to yeah. have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is Good great. to have you back in LA. Yeah, great to be back, man. I miss this town. And we'll see you guys next week. One band, one sound. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, can I do plugs real quick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Guys, watch, uh, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Very Nadav Show, where I currently release uh, Catching You Up with Nadav, which is kind of like inside in podcast industry uh, video essays type stuff. And I got really cool stuff coming out. Andres might make an appearance on it at some point soon. Um, but yeah, check it out. See you guys. Bye.